The Jeremy Corbyn wing of the Labour Party have had a good day. Entrenching their hold on the party, you might have heard about a High Court judge telling the party that it can't stop its recently signed up members from getting a chance to vote in the leadership election. That'll probably benefit Mr Corbyn. And there was a second boost in elections for the National Executive Committee. Corbyn supporters took a little more control. Here's Secunda Kamani. Are you interested in against Jeremy Corbyn? Just a few weeks ago, the rival factions of Labour spent 48 hours battling on the streets, encouraging voters to pay a one-off fee for a vote in the leadership race. To support the Labour Party, support Jeremy Corbyn. They thought it was too late for people to become new members of the party and get a vote that way. But today's court decision changes that. Tonight, Jeremy Corbyn welcomed the ruling that allows thousands of members who joined Labour after the 12th of January to take part in the ballot. From the judgment that was given today, the judge seemed very clear that his decision was that all members of the party should have a right to vote in the leadership contest. Surely that has to be the right decision. The Labour Party currently has around a whopping 500,000 official members, but around 130,000 of them joined within the last six months. The NEC had ruled that they wouldn't get a vote in the leadership contest. The only way they could would be if they paid an extra £25 to become registered supporters. But now those 130,000 are back in, and Labour looks likely to have to repay the £25 fees any of them paid to become registered supporters. The case for me and for others uh, were, was all about fairness and equality and inclusion in the political process, uh, unfairness being the main reason. It seemed, uh, it seemed very perverse that the Labour Party should manipulate the rules to exclude nearly a quarter of its membership, uh, yet at the same time offer memberships to those who could afford, afford to pay the £25. Current polling puts Corbyn ahead in the race, but whilst most agree the majority of more recent members back him, it's not clear just how significant allowing them to vote will be. Among the selectorate, this group of people who are actually voting in the leadership election, it appears from our polling at the moment that Jeremy Corbyn is in prime position. But having said that, we don't really know for sure what this new group will bring to the voting. It's likely my sense is that they'll probably favour Jeremy Corbyn, but what we also don't know is how many of them have already signed up subsequently as £25 members. So there's a lot of uncertainty around that, but also a lot could still change as Owen Smith becomes better known. It was at a closely split NEC meeting last month that the decision was taken to bar recent party members from voting. But the NEC is changing. Results in its election out tonight showed victories for Corbyn supporters. Nevertheless, the current NEC has decided to appeal against today's court ruling. The Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell described that as a deeply disappointing decision by a small clique of people behind closed doors. I don't think it's right for John or I to interfere in the NEC, the ruling body of the Labour Party. It's for them now to choose what they're going to do, whether they're going to appeal this ruling or not. I'm just going to, whatever the rules are, I'm just going to play by them and continue to, uh, to make my case. So some people see the NEC decision as effectively a deliberate attempt to disenfranchise Corbyn supporters. We don't know that that's the case because there were, there were certainly, I knew lots of moderates were, were signing up to vote against Corbyn as well, so it, it cuts both ways. If the party has the right to appeal, then it should, surely it should stand by the considered decision, and the democratic decision that, that its ruling body took. But that, if there's an appeal process, that could delay the whole leadership contest. Well, when no, that happened in it, September. It, people are saying that the, 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 the appeal process would be, would be dealt with, it could be in court as early as Thursday. Owen Smith has called for an extension of the leadership contest, but the whole process is getting rather messy. The more these internal rifts are played out in public, the harder it will be for the party to eventually come together, and the less time they have to focus on holding the new Conservative government to account. Secunda Kamani there. Well, let's discuss today's events now with Claudia Webb, who was today elected to Labour's NEC. She supports Jeremy Corbyn. And also with us are the columnist and former advisor to Tony Blair, John McTurnan, and the journalist and author Rachel Shabby. Um, if I can start with you, if I may, uh, Claudia. Um, look, it's been posited as a kind of the left, the hard left, getting more of a grip on the party, today's NEC election. Is that how you see it? 
Well, no, what I see is that what we've got now is an opportunity to have a powerful voice for ordinary party members. I've been elected to represent the voice of ordinary party members, the constituency Labour parties around the country, and ensure that uh, ordinary party members get a full say in the whole running and working of the Labour Party. And it's about enabling that voice and that influence to be heard, to be recognised and to be supported. Right. But what's been... How would you like the NEC to change? I mean, what do you think of the way the NEC has been operating? How would you Well, of course, I mean, my, if I was uh, on the NEC at the time, it was making decisions that related to uh, the voice of ordinary party members, the whole uh, uh, notion that we've, that we've had where members have not been able to, for example, <coughs> vote in the uh, forthcoming leadership election because of the ruling of the NEC. Clearly, I would not be voting that way or I would not be directing the National Executive Committee to diminish the voice of uh, ordinary party members. It was really important that of those 33 members the rule of, that rule the Labour Party, that the voice of ordinary party members really has much more of a say because you have to recognise that things have changed since Jeremy Corbyn uh, became leader. There's been a huge increase in party membership. We're now at 500,000, half a million members, probably the largest party in the UK, if not Western Europe. That voice, therefore, that increase in voice of the members needs to really come through and be reflected. Claudia, thank you very much. Let's turn to the other two of you, if I might. Um, John, isn't it pretty obvious now that your wing of the party has lost control of the steering wheel. The other side have pushed you out of the way. They've got the steering wheel. They're going to drive the car in the direction they want. And it's very hard to see how you're going to get it back, at least for a couple of decades, isn't it? Look, people who want to see a Labour government, people like me who support Clause 1 of the Labour Party, about being a parliamentary party that wins power, yeah, today's a great setback for us. The NEC elections are disastrous, as is the High Court ruling. And there's no doubt, in my mind, that a Jeremy Corbyn-led Labour Party uh, with the kind of focus it's got now is it's not focused on electability, it's not focused on winning power, it's not focused on winning elections. And it, it may not take two decades, it's certainly going to take ten years to take the Labour Party back to where it can be a presentable electable party. I mean, do you, Rachel, agree that it is basically... Essentially, we've had two people wrestling over who's in control and it's resolved in favour of the left? I think it's ridiculous to suggest that only one part of this uh, equation is interested in electability. Of course, Jeremy Corbyn and his supporters want to win right. power. But do you, can can I just given. ask you to answer the one I asked? Do you think it, you're, you're in control now? The left is in control, and it's very hard for John McTurnan to get, to get well, control back. What, what I see, if we're going to use this analogy of control and a steering wheel, it's like one side of the party um, you know, taking hold of the steering wheel of the Labour Party and repeatedly slamming it into a wall. I mean, let's look at what's happened recently. Um, you know, we've had um, re mass resignations and then the decision to have a leadership election, even though we've only just had one, and then uh, saying that Jeremy Corbyn couldn't be on the ballot and then saying that Labour Party members couldn't vote for him. And now we have a High Court ruling saying, actually, yes, those Labour Party members can vote. And the NEC response is to contest to that using the Labour Party membership money. So at what point are they going to say, hang on a minute, we're a democratic party. This is not a democratic process anymore. Do, 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 I mean, the, the McDonnell quote, you know, says it's mm -hmm. a small clique, John, a small clique behind closed doors who've openly expressed their opposition to Jeremy. He, I mean, it's, I'm not sure, it is I mean, true, isn't it? No, I'm not, I, don't, I don't think people have been silent about their scepticism about uh, McDonnell himself and about Jeremy Corbyn. There are people who are opposed to the tradition of the Labour Party that wishes to win elections. That's a perfectly decent tradition. They just shouldn't be in charge of the Labour Party. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn's poll ratings are some of the worst that any party leader's had. The Labour Party is 16 points behind the Tory party. Um, really, the La if, if you're judging by results, his, his shadow cabinet are alienated. 80% of the Parliamentary Labour Party have to work day in, day out with them, don't trust him, um, and the public don't want to vote for him. And that's before you've even started to discuss about his IRA support, support for Ken Livingston, his anti-Semitism, all those things. It's like we've barely scratched the surface of what's And this is the same the discussion we've been having for the whole of the summer. I yeah. do want to just focus it. At the John McDonnell quote, a small clique of people behind closed doors, couldn't we say that's the same of momentum? I mean, you know, 
Tory was a momentum candidate. I mean, Rachel, isn't that exactly what one would say about the, the clique who've taken over the Labour Party, isn't it? You know, I think that when you hear stuff like that, it just seems to be so disconnected from a fundamental change that has taken place in politics. Look at the number of people joining the Labour Party. Half a million. That's amazing. That's the biggest party in Europe. That is a single signal of change. That's not a clique. That is people who have been disconnected from politics for decades and are now re-engaging, reinvigorated and actually want to create change. That's not a clique, that's a movement. How do you get to represent 500,000? Because it, it, it's basically being by supported by Momentum, being on their ticket and then you, you get well, the whole I, lot I'm, of Well, uh, I'm a Labour councillor. I've been a Labour member for over 30 years. I have been a long-standing Labour member. So when you look at the membership of the Labour Party, it is wide and it is diverse. It is reflective of British but society. Could you have been elected and if you had not had momentum saying, vote for Claudia? It is basically, it's as simple as that. They said to you to vote for, and you all got in. I think you? what you saw was a vote for a vote for uh, Jeremy Corbyn's ideas and policies and the step in the right direction. Members voted last year in an overwhelming way for Jeremy Corbyn. And that is what, in a sense, we're taking forward. Taking forward his ideas, but taking forward grassroots democracy, because that's what members chose right. to have. Rachel, what is the plan as to how you win an election? Because you are behind in the polls. You do have the problem that the shadow cabinet doesn't trust your leader, and you do have the problem that you have not persuaded people like John McTernan that this is the man to run the party. What just tell us the plan for winning for victory? I mean, first of all, um, let's get this over with because it's a bit ridiculous um, saying that uh, the Labour Party's polling has fallen. It's a bit like derailing a train, wrecking yeah. it, and then saying, why can't no, the driver wait, drive the train? Saying, what is Obviously, your plan? You can blame them. I'm not... Now I'm asking, what is your plan for getting the party elected. I'm only pointing out that the low you, polling... Okay, we, let's, let's deal with the blame. It's to do with being divided. Let's put aside the blame. Okay, so you yeah. unite. Now, what is your plan? You unite. That's not, that's and then not you, a plan because it's not going to work. And then you campaign. And then you campaign. Right. And then you use your grassroots uh, movement, okay. half a million people, to canvass, so to campaign, to go into communities, <laughs> to talk to people, to persuade them of the Labour argument. And John, that is the plan. Last word to you, because you're a part of that plan, because you basically have to unite for that plan to work. Opposing Trident, leaving the country defenceless, having no plan for the economy, not having an answer on immigration or welfare, and on top of that, being, being a mate of Ken Livingston with his anti-Semitic views, defending all that, there's no chance that's sellable on any doorstep in the country. We'll leave it there. Thank you all.